Good everyone. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Um, so today I'm not gonna uh, teach you guys anything around the Salesforce, but instead I just want to give you an update that I've released this course, Sharing Invisibility Architect. Um, so it's a paid course. It's not a free course. So if you wanted to buy it, you can go to my website and buy it. I'll put the link in the description below. So I just wanted to tell you guys the topics I've covered. Um, so if you look at the topic, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so I, I talked about the data security, which normally talks about org by default, sharing rules, metal sharing, other stuff, right? Um, then briefly touched upon file sharing, account team, list view sharing, report and dashboard sharing, uh, territory management, custom permission, and APIC sharing, APIC share reason. <clears throat> I explained a few things using code uh, because it's expected that you should know a little bit of coding. Uh, because this is an architect certification and even if you're following that application architect route, right? Uh, there's a prerequisite a Prerequisite in the sense that right you can't call yourself a, as an application architect till you get your PD one and app builder, right? So so if you have done your PD one, that's the platform developer one I generally expect that you guys have some fairly decent understanding around apex I'm not going I'm not expecting you to know LWC or extensive JavaScript, but at least you can write, you know, simple code, write in simple test class, you know, simple functions, that kind of stuff, right? So a few of the, the things I have covered using code, like with sharing without sharing using Apex, uh, when do you use it and why do you use it? Um, there is a topic around the large data volume, so there is a crossover with integration architects, some of the stuff. I explained might be more relevant for integration architect, but that being said, that being said, right, uh, it is important from a sharing visibility architect certification perspective because uh, you will get asked a few questions around large data volume. Um, you know what happens when you get large data volume? Sorry, what what happens? You know when you are going to change the role uh, when you're working in an enterprise org, right? Uh, what options you're going to use? Uh, to make sure that the impact is kind of minimized. Uh, I talked about session-based permission set, <clears throat> and then uh, I did talk about granular locking and you know deferred sharing and other stuff. Um, I did explain a case study, like you know based on the real life ex experience, um, because the project implementation experience I had. I've been working on Salesforce for quite a long time, right? And I worked as an architect. Um, you know, still I do, right? I work uh, for a government agency so, uh, as the Salesforce platform architect, and I I've been involved in a lot of sharing stuff. So, uh, sharing, you know, configuring the sharing and realigning and you know, building an architecture stuff around it. So I so I, I decided to share you know a couple of scenarios with you guys so <clears throat> so that it kind of makes sense to you guys when you when you guys take the course. Um, then a few questions and answer just to give you an idea of what you can expect in your certification. Um, then the quick study guide. This is like a study scribble, which I normally do before any certification. So what I normally encourage people to just go and take, uh, read this two days before certification, um, just to give you a refresher, right? Then I got, uh, uh, so I've included uh, 12 practice tests just to test your knowledge to see if you're ready or not. So yeah, and I kept the price of the course pretty low, 35 bucks. It's not too much, right? 35 New Zealand dollars, you, you know, just pretty dirt cheap. <laughs> I mean, you go out for a meal, right? For a family of four, it just costs you 200 bucks in New Zealand. That's, I mean, it's pretty cheap. Um, and I do understand some people from, uh, you know, different side of the world <clears throat> reach out to me for a discount. And I tell them, unfortunately, I can't because I would pay to my hosting provider. And you know, given the given the things that are going in the world at this stage, right? I mean, my mate suggested to me that uh, you're selling the course like almost free, right? Why are you just charging thirty five bucks? Look, look at the guy in Australia that charges like two hundred fifty bucks an hour if they wanted to do a one on one training. But that being said, right, my course is not for one on one training. It's just an open course. You know, you can buy it and study yourself, right? I don't give uh, after a support or kind of stuff, right? So that's the reason why I kept the course pretty cheap. And and to get the you know uh, and and to help people right who can't afford to pay uh, and lots of money right because I know that in New Zealand sometimes people do online not online yeah these days it's kind of online but like a two days workshop and they charge you like around fifteen hundred to two grand or sometimes three thousand uh, dollars 
Um, so yeah, compared to that, 35 bucks is just a peanut, right? So uh, that's one of my apologies. I just wanted to be upfront about it. You know, I'm a kind of guy who just don't beat around the bush. I just tell you straight in the face, right? I can't give you discount. So yeah. All right. <clears throat> and um, one of the prerequisites I just want to tell you guys that if you're new to Salesforce, don't take the certification. You're not ready for it. I expect you to have uh, you guys to have at least a platform developer one and app builder. And if you struggle with the programming side of you, if you're not very sure, then just don't go and take the certification, right? And just don't rely only on this course. I would expect you to do hands-on, uh, go to Trailhead, you know, form a study group. Uh, because obviously, you know, you might have an assumption that just taking my course, uh, you will clear the certification. You might. I mean, I'm not saying that you won't. I mean, that's the reason why I made this course. But I don't think, right, you're ready if you just rely on my course, if you don't have any hands-on experience. That's not the whole point. That's not the point of this course. This point of the course is to give you that added advantage once you know what you're doing in that space, right? This is not to replace, you know, a couple of years experience you have uh, in the sharing space or a couple of years experience you have working as an architect. This is one of the biggest uh, issue I have in the Salesforce space. People take Salesforce architect certification and call them as an architect. It's not the case, right? I have seen right people getting fired from the job because they, you know, they pretend they can do this stuff when they come up with the architecture solution. Some enterprise architect will look at it and say, this is holy crap. It's just a piece of a trash. I'm sorry, I didn't want to sound rude. <clears throat> this is a language sometimes I've seen the senior architect uses against the people, you know, which is not very nice in my opinion, but you know, sometimes when you're running a company, right, you have to take, you can't always show care. Sometimes you need to show the stick. You know, that's the unfortunate reality. I mean, I personally don't use such language. I don't like to use it. I don't, you know, because I normally not involved in decision making to let somebody go from a project. <clears throat> you know, I always try to be, you know, give, I like to give person a second chance, right, just to improve. Uh, because all of this, it's it's not anyone's fault, right? If you you might have a bad day, but if you're constantly having a bad day, right, not improving, then you might have to reconsider your you know position. That's that's all I, I have to say. So that's my sincere advice and sincere request that please do not take this course if you are new to this sharing and visibility. I mean, you might tell me, hey, you are a business owner, right? Why are you recommending people not to buy a course? The reason why I wanted to be a business owner with with the moral compass attached to right i don't want it to go and tell you guys hey buy my course and you'll clear the certification without no experience right that is not what this course is about i'm not going to make you from zero to hero right like some people you know sell the course i expect you guys to have some basic understanding about sharing like i expect you guys to know what or what default is about, how to create sharing rules, how to create ownership-based sharing, how to create criteria-based sharing, right? What are public groups? What, what's the use of Q? So <clears throat> if you have a fairly decent understanding, then I'm pretty sure this course will do an excellent job, uh, you know, to give you the added advantage. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Um, sorry for the rant, but I just wanted to be absolutely honest with you guys because I don't want you guys to think that I'll make a course just for the sake of selling it. That's not the whole point, right? I just wanted to help people to get certified. I just wanted to help people to feel passionate that they, and to feel proud, that, so that they can feel pride, a proud, right? That they clear the certification. Um, sorry, but that's, that's all I wanted to cover. Uh, my apologies, my throat has been a bit funny today. You know, somebody gave me this um, a cherry liqueur candy. Uh, he bought it from Holland. Um, I had like five of them, and then my throat started to act a bit weird. <clears throat> I don't know why. Maybe some allergic reaction, but normally I don't eat chocolate, but, you know, the cherry liqueur, I might as well. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys have an amazing Sunday. Adios.